2016 Chevrolet, it's a Traverse. It's got the big 3.6. It's 78 degrees in the shop. The engine computer here thinks it's five degrees or 3.2 or eight. And you can see it just kind of is going quite random. And it has a code stored in it here. I think a 116 it was. So we've got a 118 and a 119. Uh, engine coolant temp sensor circuit high voltage and coolant temp sensor circuit intermittent. So I think we're on the right track. We need to figure out what's actually up here. In an attempt to be uh, proactive here, I ordered what I think is wrong with it. You can't be an everyday schmuck. You got to be a mechanic according to this. Is this how you interpret this, Vanessa? Businessman. <laughs> Mechanic man, okay? <laughs> no schmucks. Uh, got us a coolant temp sensor and then I got us a connector. Uh, but here's the dilemma is you let it sit for a minute and you know we're back to you know what I think should, is probably the real temperature. Now in an effort to not be doped by bad data, I did switch over to generic OBD2. I think, what, think? what it means is you need a hard hat and you need your overalls. You Ooh. probably shouldn't be doing this today. Before we dive into service data, we'll pull the plastic cover off here. See if we can find out where this little guy lives. Probably in no man's land. It's got to be near the coolant somewhere. Let's see, is it back here? Yeah. Perhaps. Okay, I gave up. I looked on service data. It said in between cylinders two and four. So it must be down here, just to the left of the dipstick, which we'll yank that out of the way. And we'll pull this harness here a little bit out of our way. And I've got the scan tool over here. I'm gonna take and pull this protective sleeve up here, which you guys can't see, but I can't see either. So no worries. We'll have to get a pick because it has one of those red locks in it. That some engineer thought, hey, this is a good idea. Right, Phil? That's right. Great idea. Yeah. Well, if you got the guy working on the car reaching for the connector, it's a great idea. So we're gonna try to pick the little red tab up out of the way. I know, like I say, you guys can't see, but you're just going to have to play make-believe. That's uh, All right, give this light some flying lessons here. Mother round two. I wish Astro would come up with a light that was magnetized to plastic. That would be awesome see here try to keep my face out of the way for you I think a little red pick is there's a little red tab is up maybe try to depress the tab here give the wire a little tug boom she's open and on scan data, it went right to minus 40. So now what we have to do, because it's gonna be a very difficult concern to duplicate, and based on experience, I'm gonna tell you we likely have a bad sensor because, and I say that because it only happens within a certain temperature window. Um, so let's say once the coolant temp gets to about 150 to 170 degrees, that's when this thing goes haywire and not really in between. Um, as I showed you on scan data, once it got down to like 140, it just, it stayed steady and I'm watching it climb down into the, you know, into the 130s. Our connector looks good. I think I did a video on this on a Honda Civic one time and I showed you, I just fast forwarded through the video as I let the car warm up, went from you know 40 degrees all the way up, kept going up to hit about 120, coolant temp went haywire, it passed that bad spot in the sensor so to speak, and then started working good again. So, instead of fiddling around with this, 
uh, the sensor is very inexpensive, less than 20 bucks. We're just gonna take a big fat guess. We're gonna put it in the magazine of our parts cannon. We're gonna aim steady and pull the trigger. So here's the sensor. It uh, has a sealing washer on the bottom. Straight threads, doesn't require any sealant. Now prior to doing this, you're gonna wanna make sure you take the pressure off the cooling system. And in this case, I haven't. But if you do it, make sure you do, and make sure you drain the coolant out of it also, uh, which I also haven't done. Why? Well, because GM hides the radiator cap on this car underneath a bunch of plastic. And two, Danger is my middle name. Some people think it's Thomas, but it's actually Danger. So we're gonna go like this. We're gonna try not to get scalded. And what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna get ready, okay? You can give it the left-handed handy to take it out and then have this ready in your right hand. And you pull out real quick, then you come down in real quick. Ah, <laughs> oh, crap, I'm missing the hole. Fortunately, there's no pressure on it. Come on, baby. Feel around there, there she is. Get it started. With a little bit of luck, you don't even spill any coolant. Okay, I've got her started. And then we're gonna go in and finish it off with the 19 deep. I have to use a half inch drive. Uh, the 3 8 drive just doesn't fit the sensor in the socket all the way, at least mine don't. Got a couple brands. Just don't get all cattywampus with your socket here and snap the plastic off. Oh, mother! There, that's nice and snug. We'll look at it with a mirror. Let's go down here and see, oh, look at that, that's nice. And it looks like the tab, the lock tab, is just about in the same position the OG was. Okay, key's still on, we're gonna take this thing, what we should do is take that red clip off right now and just throw it right in the trash. If it was my own personal vehicle, I would. clicks right in nicely. Just had to talk to it, I guess. And we're gonna push the red tab down. No, I'm not gonna. Yes, I do. Just pretend I put the red tab back down. Gotta get this thing down. I'm curious, on the automotive locks that they seem to stick everywhere, particularly Nissan and Chrysler, Nissan are the worst. Prior to the invention of the green lock tab on the Nissans, was there really an issue with connectors just randomly falling off? I don't know. I don't know whatever brought about the the invention of the connecting lock or connector lock. Maybe it was before my time and connectors just randomly fell off cars. So I make sure we have this protective sleeve all the way down. There we go, it's all the way down sitting against or close to the manifold here. Yep. I don't know if you guys can see in my mirror or not, but the sleeve does go all the way down because it sits very close to the exhaust manifold. So that's probably what cooks it. And that's probably GM's effort to stop it from going nuclear. It's putting that sleeve around it. So now what we need to do, if we're gonna look at scan date, I'm just gonna let the car warm up 
and we'll see what it looks like. Folks, uh, there we are. Uh, looks like we went through the whole spectrum there. Of course, I put it in ultra fast forward for you. We got up to 210. It'll get up to 220 or so and kick the fans on. Uh, but clearly, no uh, glitch in that speed or yeah, speed sensor uh, in the coolant sensor. Okay, that should be that, folks. I'm gonna take it for a quick shakedown around town. We already cleared the codes out of it. But like I say, this should resolve this fellow's problem. And sometimes. We do what we have to do as far as guessing. Um, like I say, in this case, it was the most plausible piece, uh, providing that you know the connector is not all you know green and crusty, which it wasn't. So you know that's the I think the best thing that we could do, particularly when the part like that is so cheap. Uh, like I said, I believe you know that OEM Bosch sensor. I mean, it was less than twenty bucks or somewhere's right around there so it didn't really constitute sitting here and fiddling and letting it warm up and making it hot uh you know i seen it act up seen it act up within a certain temperature range and, you know you make the call and if it's the wrong call well i'll come back and fix it and i'll call you to head into that comment section while you're down there the questions the insta the facebook the concerns you have and just remember viewers if i can do it you can do it thanks for watching